So welcome back, your host, Danita, with the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. And today, I'm very excited to bring in this special guest. She is a graduating Booty Bands accountability member. So you get to really get to witness what type of discovery she's been able to get out of the last six months. So Amanda Wessel is a mom, a high school teacher, an MC, and she also is has her own YouTube channel. She has all these amazing things. We're going to get into actually where you can follow her at the end, but let's get started into really what our topic is today. Booty Bands and Barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one coaching. Our topic is how we can break free of the negativity, whether that's our relationship, whether that was past bullies, whether that is friends, whatever that is, there's negativity that can really surround us in our life. And that was something that really was a cool and amazing breakthrough that Mandy and I were able to bond and really share and discover ways around this. So Mandy, if you want to go ahead and start, uh, lead us to what you found to really help you through that journey or what is your, maybe your story with that? Okay. Well, I was, you know, as I started the accountability program, I was uh, coming to the end of a very, (laughs) a very long divorce process uh, from a marriage that wasn't very healthy for me as far as, um, you know, my emotional well-being. There was a lot of emotional verbal abuse in that relationship. And then I also had a, a, you know, a relationship following that, that ended right after I started the accountability program that we've talked a lot about. And, you know, my, my self-confidence was not great at that point, but through doing the work and really looking at that mindset piece of the program, which has been, by the way, my favorite piece of the whole program, which was such a surprise to me because, you know, you go into this, just thinking about your body and the outside appearance and, that has improved greatly, but the inner work that I've been able to do has really been a game changer and been so valuable. But getting back to the to the negativity and all of that um, before the program. So, you know, we really took a, a look in the program at, you know, not that it it was my fault by any means, but I had been attracting kind of negative people into my life for a reason. People who were um, emotionally unavailable people who were avoidantly attached, you know, all of those big buzzwords, right. <laughs> that you hear now, um, in kind of the self-help world, but it really was true. And we really had to take a look at, you know, why was I attracting these negative people to me and letting them kind of steal my, steal my light, <laughs> you know, and, and how it affected me and everything. So, uh, you know, examining all of that was really helpful to me. So just, you know, going back to childhood, and we started talking about my earliest memories of, you know, when I first felt, you know, that negativity, or that I, my, my self-confidence, you know, started diminishing. And I was really lucky. I had a really, I grew up with a really supportive family. So I know a lot of people get to that place because of something in their home life, their family life. I really had a great family life. My family was very supportive and positive and encouraging, but I did, however, face some really serious bullying, which we talked about a lot from females, from other females, which is really unfortunate. And as I've gone through the program, I realized that that has shaped a lot of my relationships, you know, both romantic relationships and friendships throughout the years. So it was really cool to just get in there and see why that was happening and what I could do to shift that negative energy. And I think we've made so much progress with that. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Now, somebody that might be listening might go, wait a minute, you went in to get body transformation, but you had to do mind work. And then you're sitting here talking about bullies. How did that have any direct correlation to help you get more of a body transformation? Well, first off, the the shift in your energy and when you allow more positive energy into your life and also recognizing that you are worth the transformation, you know, will make the results follow. It's, it does sound pretty, pretty kooky, but we, we saw, we saw the numbers, you know, we saw the like black and white proof when we would, you know, I, I do my progress every week and those weeks where my mind shift, 
mindset was shifting, you know, that's where I saw the biggest improvements. But it really is true because, you know, when you get to the point where you have so many people in your life telling you that you're not enough, that you're not worth it, you start to believe it, you absorb it. And then you have that negative self-talk as well. And it definitely has a physiological uh, effect. You know, you sent me that little video that was so cool. And it was towards the beginning when I was really struggling about the the man who talks to the plants, right? <laughs> and, he talk, and he says all the positive words. Again, sounds really like hippy dippy, but it's it's a proven thing. And, you know, with the one plant, he's saying all these positive things. And with the other one, he's saying these horrible things. And the one that is talked to in a positive way, like flourishes. And the one that's the plant that's spoken to in a negative way just withers and, you know, it's gross after a couple of weeks. So that energy shift is huge in in your progress and telling yourself, you know, yes, I can do this. I'm worth it. And, you know, just, just being positive over, overall. Yeah, absolutely. And what we do here is exactly what Mandy said. Sometimes in order to go forward in our life, we sometimes have to go what's called backwards. Being able to kind of really identify what those loops are can actually help us uncover ways that we can actually be aligned into our truth, which really is ways that we can get to our goals. And so that's why we have the total, it's called total integration. It's the three trifecta in the program. I was just speaking to a, a lady that has a program and she has, she does, she's like in her sixties and she has, she's a fitness instructor as I am. And I go, so if somebody is having an emotional eating experience, how do you handle that? And she goes, oh, I would just refer them to a therapist. And I was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe like giving any of my members over to a therapist that usually that's 10 to 20 years of just trying to talk and figure out what that is. When we're able to find a fast track way of a three-step process that can identify where the triggers are, that you're not in your alignment, where that creates those emotions, those those feelings and actions all come from that. And so uh, we'll go ahead and uh, just, I, as we really appreciate Mandy sharing her own loop, um, a lot of the members do this because they know that it can help inspire you. So for those that are listening right now, she's being vulnerable to share her like raw moments yeah. of a self-sabotage <laughs> loop, okay? So um. I'll, I'll explain this, but Mandy, feel free to jump in. If you would prefer to go through it, you let me know. But um, ultimately what you wanted was to have good, solid, healthy relationships and successful in your health and fitness journey. And the trigger was um, there was something that was just in a way of stopping you because you were always attracting, like you said, these toxic people that in your, in your life and you're finding yourself, what we do is we find ourselves in a trend, a loop or some sort of cycle. And when we're in that sort of cycle is when we want to really draw some attention to it. And that's the first step is awareness. So the trigger was this gorgeous girl in front of me, Mandy, was bullied oh, in God. school. <laughs> and and definitely being, um, you know, the, the mistreatment of not only verbal, but the mental and the emotional situations that happens at such a young age created a belief system of Mandy for I'm not worthy and I'm not important enough. And I think you were like, what, 10 years old when this all happened? Yes. It started with some of my closest, you know, girlfriends basically became mean girls, you know, toward me and really harassed me. And one of the other unf unfortunate things as I went through a lot of these experiences with these girls was that my teachers, you know, and other adults who were supervising either look the other way or you know, I, I had one bullying situation in middle school where the school literally just sent me home in May for the rest of the year and told me just have an early summer vacation because we don't really want to deal with this person, you know, who is bullying me because she had a lot of issues. So they just sent me home. So, you know, we were able to discover, you know, the message that that sent me was, well, I'm not important enough for an adult to defend me. And I Which hear is, this, I hear this quite often too, of women that have been raped or some sexual abuse that happened and they go to their parents and say, Hey, so-and-so inappropriate touched, touched me. And their parents say, Oh, you're just lying. Go ahead and just, you know, shove it aside. And don't, we don't need to go there because maybe yeah. themselves can't even handle it. Maybe they don't have the tools to be able to go through that. So I think a lot of women can really relate to that, that even the superiors are not able to even look at this and handle it in a healthy approach, which makes you feel like, well, then who in the heck can I trust 
if I can't right. trust my teachers and my principal or my own mother and father. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, which then led to the next thought of hiding and keeping a secret. Yes. Yeah. Because on the, you know, I always wanted everything on the outside to look fine. And, you know, I really beat myself. I still kind of beat myself up once in a while about, you know, showing vulnerability, but you've really helped me with that. Um, or saying that I need help, you know, I have to be like strong all the time and in control as especially the control issues, right? Like I want to be able to control everything around me. And it just felt like, I guess I'd, I would be admitting that I wasn't in control if I just said, hey, I need help or hey, this is, is happening to me. And that really, um, yeah, it really affected me. Yeah. And then it led to the feeling we have that helpless, the resentment, the anger, sadness. And what we do is right. we want to keep trailing down those emotions usually um, and just kind of find that empty void because in the empty void is usually where the next step happens. Uh, yeah. which is the actions. So right here, Mandy, we have withdrawal and then internalize when uh, little and when you're older, you are just wanting external validation. Yes. And that I really struggled with just need, you know, and I did learn that I am very anxiously attached. I am trying to get over that. I've made a lot of progress with it, but yes, needing that validation from outside sources you know, needing to be reminded very often, you know, that everything's still good in a relationship or, or you know, that, that the person still likes me and, and all of that. It's, I think a lot of people struggle with that too. I know because there are a billion Instagram accounts now that are, are all about those things in relationships, right? Is, you know, getting upset if you don't hear from someone that you want to. And, you know, so we really looked at like, where does that all come from? Why are there, you know, there are people out there who don't need that validation all the time. They're good with themselves. And I admire those people and definitely want to be more like those people. So doing the inner work is, is definitely getting me closer to that. And also not giving a flying fig, you know, what people think about me, because, you know, we also, part of this is, is, um, you know, the, the people that you encounter in the social media world. And I know you've had experiences as well with just how mean they can be. And, you know, I'm a very, you know, pretty small YouTuber at this point, but I do go on live stream shows. I've actually added um, a few now that I'm on, now I'm on about four of them, you know, give or take, but um, you get trolls in the comments saying things to you as you're trying to talk and do the show. There's people in the comments saying things about you you know, there are, there are literally websites and Reddit groups where they watch, they watch me, you know, and my friends on our show and other people in the, in the fragrance community and say all these horrible things about them. So we really learned, or what I learned from you is that all of that negativity that comes from those people has something to do with their own loops. They have their own loops going on that have nothing to do with me. And, you know, and I, I was applying that to other people in my life too. Once we talked about that, I was thinking back to all these people in my life who were nasty to me for no good reason. And I thought, you know what, like that was their problem. They had their own things going on. And I know some of them had some really heavy things going on in their own lives, but they just were taking it out on me, but it had nothing to do with me. So it's, it's, it's great because you, you told me before that session, I'm going to teach you the secret of like making it so that you will be completely unruffled when someone says something horrible to you, you know, is negative to you, talks down to you, whatever that negativity is that's being spewed at you that you can just like shrug it off. Be like, you know what? That has nothing to do with me. They must have a pretty sad life. I feel actually sorry for them. And I have gotten to the point where some of the people who were the nastiest to me in my life, now I feel sorry for them instead of holding on to anger and resentment, which is definitely not healthy. Yeah, absolutely. Never getting triggered is making yourself completely whole. And so that's really the majority of the program is finding your alignment and your truth. And when you're there, there's so much immense power that really comes from that. 
And so, yeah, thanks for sharing that as, as what we can see this loop of just being bullied at 10 has led to, again, those beliefs, those limiting beliefs of not worthy, not good enough. And then it leads into a lot of contracting energy of like, when you were younger, you would lock yourself in like closets or hide yourself, right? Uh, you wouldn't yeah. really overextend yourself. Um, you had to prove to others to get the attention. And then you just ended up finding yourself attracting, again, abuse, whether it was ex-husband or another relationship. And it's almost like you find yourself kind of in a weird way, repeating the same cycle, almost like that same bullying happens again throughout adulthood. And we're kind of like, why am I having the same experience? Why can't I get away from these toxic people? And you don't realize that, the common denominator is your limiting beliefs underneath the surface that is continuing to attract that frequency of, okay, if well, you're not good enough, you're not worthy. You attract people that will cling on to that belief of you and then take advantage of you for those natures. Right. Right. So as you're being able to break through that and actually see across the scale of either the nutrition, the workouts, the mindset, and as we rate each one of those, and you see those numbers, just scaling and growing, do you feel yourself kind of changing almost from like the inside out in a way? And what does that look like? Oh, absolutely. Yes. As far as setting boundaries and doing what is healthy for me and putting myself first and my emotional needs and physical needs first, you know, as what we as women, especially moms, are always taught to be so selfless and give a hundred percent to everybody else. And you're left with the scraps, you know, whatever's left over. And I really have learned to draw boundaries. And if something's not serving me, I'm not doing it. I can say no to, you know, I don't overextend myself as much now because I'm not trying to people please all the time for people who probably would not do the same for me. So, you know, that has been really you know, a game changer. And then as my mindset ha has shifted, I've attracted completely different people into my life. You know, I've been dating someone now um, for three months who is the complete opposite <laughs> of what I was used to and just shows up for me in a completely different way. And I can be vulnerable with um, but who treats me with respect and is proud of me. And, you know, I feel like I'm just growing as a person, you know, in that relationship compared to what I was dealing with before. Yeah. Which was not, not the case. And just also, you know, before I had this scarcity mindset of, well, I have to hold on to, you know, this might be all I can get. And I have to hold on to this because what if I go out there and there's nothing for me and I can't find anyone else, but I've had such a shift with that as well, where, um, you know, it, it's the, it's the complete, it's the complete opposite. And you just find that there are, a, you have an abundance mindset where you feel like I can attract a lot of great people into my life, you know, and you also helped me to heal some of those female relationships as well, or look at different people. You know, I was seeing, I had those blinders on and we talked about that in one of our sessions where I was just seeing those negative females because I still have them around me all the time. They're everywhere. And my mindset, my belief system was, oh, look, there's another woman who doesn't like me. Oh, there's another woman who's giving me side eye. There's another, another woman, you know, thinking that I'm hitting on her husband when I'm not, you know, <laughs> like all these like crazy things that I encounter. And now I've just learned to push that aside and, um, you know, attracting better female relationships as well. And go, you know, I went out with one of my girlfriends last week and it was great. And I just felt so appreciative that, you know, um, we finally made the time to get together and not, you know, the excuses of we'll do it, you know, next week or next week or next week. We finally did it. And I remember texting you about that saying like, I feel so fulfilled with this female friend. And I'm kind of like reversing all of that negativity, you know, that had in a way, it gives us control. Control. yeah, in a way, it gives us our control back because before when we don't know why, and there's just so much confusion and there's this stuck cycle of the thoughts and then the feelings and then these actions, you know, uh, what we see is, um, is commonly like women that have had these limiting beliefs 
and they have these really sad, low feelings. I've had everything from just sadness to all the way from to suicidal. And then we have all the actions going from scrolling to social media to then binging or purging, right? All of those in in betweens of the, of the environments that they live in. And they feel at a place of just like, can't, they can't control this. They feel so powerless in this type of situation. And so being able to now take control over your life of the people Mm -hmm. that you attract, the boundaries you can set, the worth that you have inside of you, you shifted a big perspective of like your mom's belief and how she raised you and how you can now take that information and shift that energy with your own child. I mean, it's just so powerful. It truly is. And so um, as we are into a lot of the mindset and negativity that surrounds us, it's, I think, even more so because we live in a digital world, because people can behind behind their computers and say whatever they want to say and think that, you know, it's they, they can hide behind it. But yes, now that we realize that they're stuck in their own loops, that there is something that's got to be underneath the surface for them to be saying those things to us. I love that shift where you're like, I actually feel bad for them before I was so angry. But now it's like, oh, man, what's going on with you in order for you to feel that? And um, that was, you know, for whoever's listening, I don't know if you have those experiences, but keep in mind that once you identify your own loop and you're able to break free of that and come into your truth, then you're able to see other people's loops. And that feeling, I totally will tell you right now, like, is it really possible, Danita, to be limitless? Yes. Is it possible to feel unstoppable? Yes. Yes. Is it possible to never be triggered by negative people again? Yes. Is it possible to reach your goals faster, actually to have your goals more attracted to you than you happen to go to your goals? Yes. All of this can be yours, but what happens is we get stuck in those loops. And so that's the beautiful trifecta of it. And I'm so excited, Mandy, for you to be here because you guys, Mandy's not getting paid to be on this podcast today. (laughs) Mandy's here to say, you know what? Vulnerable, totally humble. I'm here to inspire others that may be going through something. And to be honest, a lot of members in our community in the one-on-one program are struggling with husbands that are cheating on them. And what they're saying is, what did I do wrong? Why am I not pretty enough? Why me? Why am I broken? And if it didn't happen with the first marriage, now it's a second marriage, or maybe now it's the third marriage. And they're like, why do I always have men cheating on me? It's like, honey, that's not you. Right. Right. Yeah. Once, once you build up your self-worth and shift that mindset to, you know, and, and one of the things that might happen too, I know, you know, has, as you level up, Sometimes the people in your life and your relationships, they're not going to meet you or you know, they're not going to rise with you. That's not a bad thing. If you lose people through the process, it's not a bad thing. They just, they just can't hang with you anymore, you know, because your, your growth is making them feel their own insecurities. Absolutely. And they have that choice. They do have that choice, right? When you do level up, people always ask, well, what's my next step? Or how do I become a better mom? Or how do I reach my goals? And I said, well, what's really cool is when you do level up, your higher self already knows the next step. And you don't have to worry about if people are going to stay with you because when you're at that higher self, you're already moving forward. You don't worry about moving back because you know what back looks like. It's stuck. It's fear. Right. It's, it's not good. It's not your, it's not reaching your goals. And I've had women that are stuck in their loops for over 54 years. Wow. 54 wow. years. You know what I mean? And so it's just, it's, it's really being able to look at yourself in a different way and shine the light on the areas that really need that shining light on. And I want you to know that if you're listening, you're not alone. And I remember I lost everything. And, and that's what it will do. A, a lot of people have wait till crisis mode, truly. Like it's crisis mode before they change. But this allows you to not have to hit crisis mode. Right, right. And you will see such a, a difference 
when you look back, I mean, now I look back at the old me and I'm like, oh my gosh, what was I doing? But it's so, and you know, so in one way it's, it's hard because you really do have to own up to what you've done in the past and say, that wasn't working. I, I made some mistakes here. Um, but you'll see just such a clear divide between your old ways and your old self and the new improved self, which is fantastic. You brought up something there, very important. There's a lot of guilt that comes into play right in that moment when people look back and they go, oh man, I've been doing this to myself. And the, the, the tidbit I would give there is you did the best you could with the tools you were given. Right. Now, when you're given new tools, you have the ability now as you as a mom can now give these tools to your child. I don't care how much you've messed them up because all of us are messed up. We all have loops. <laughs> Try to get yes. out of your loop, but you're all in loops. And so right. now that you have this information, as you can see your own child in a loop and you can look at him and go, well, how does that make you feel? And when you feel that, what does it make you want to do? And when you do that, what are you constantly stuck in? Okay, well, now we know that we need to get you to your alignment. Is it true that at age 10, you were really not worthless and not good enough? And, and you think that you were deserving of getting bullied by school? No, right? No, no. we know that we know that at age 10, that wasn't. But what happens is such a big world of unknowns. And these little boys and little girls that come into this world and go, how do I fit into this world? And as quickly as our brains can label it, because it doesn't like the unknowns, we'll hurry up and label it. That's where limiting beliefs come in. And then we're totally out of our alignment of fully reaching all of our goals. So mm -hmm. now thinking of like, Mandy, as you breathe in that you are important and that you do matter and that you are enough and you always have been, mm -hmm. and you're so worthy of somebody taking care of you and treating you like you should. What does that like feel like? And then what is the action? What's the new Mandy that exudes from that place? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like a release and also just like, you know, <laughs> uh, literally drop, you know, literally dropping weight, but you're also dropping that emotional weight. You're just shedding that. It's almost like you're unzipping <laughs> that outer, you know, cover of, you know, all your old stuff and just taking it off and stepping out in your best fanciest outfit in your hottest high heels like that's how you feel right we talk about that moment and that is just so cool you know to to feel that way and yeah you just feel like you want to set the world on fire and also like spread that positivity to other people and be a good role model. So that's, you know, one of the reasons why I like doing the podcast is because I want, I want everyone to know just how great this, this program is and what it can do. And I mean, truly uh, turn your, turn your life around in so many different ways. And, you know, I'm a high school teacher, so I deal with teenage girls, especially who are going through a lot of these issues and they're getting bullied. I, I can't even imagine if back when I was bullied, if social media existed and I had to see that constantly, you know, on all the different platforms, like it was bad enough when they were just writing notes about me or whatever. So I feel like now I'm also a better role model for, for them, mm -hmm. you know, and even if I don't explicitly, you know, tell them all these lessons that hopefully just by example, they're absorbing some of that, that energy. They do because they can look up to you and say, well, if she's strong, maybe I can be strong. If she yeah. believes that she's worthy, maybe I can be worthy. And that's exactly what our kids see too. They follow after our example. If we don't have worthy ourselves and we're not setting boundaries, well, neither are they because they're like, well, how am I any better than my mom? I'm not better than her. So then they resort to literally attracting that same type of thing. And so thanks for sharing that. It's, it's really cool to now see like, uh, the, those rock bottom moments, we don't know why we go through them, but truly when you look back now, as you see it and you see the bigger picture and you're like me being bullied through school allowed me to have so much depth that now when somebody else is bullied, I can relate to them because if you mm -hmm. were a teacher that was never bullied, you wouldn't be able to relate to these kids. Right. But now you can be that example for them or for your children and be able to take the tools that you learned and take it with you. And that's, 
that's empowerment. That's, that's so beautiful. <laughs> it is. That's cool. It is. So, um, thank you for just your vulnerability today. As you guys can tell, nothing's scripted. It's all about just mm -hmm. in our showing up for our authentic, genuine selves and just explaining the things that have really helped us in our journey. So that way it can help you. So, um, if somebody is just like, man, I love Mandy and I want to continue to see her, oh. pro her process, not only with mindset, but also your body transformation and just kind of follow you. Where are some ways that they can find more about you and what you do? So I have a perf. If you if you notice, I love perfume. So I do have a perfume YouTube channel. It's called Limelight Last. I'm sure we'll have the links and everything for that. I also um, have an Instagram account for my uh, perfume channel, which is Limelight underscore Last. I'm also a blogger for the City Pulse. Um, it's thecitypulse.com slash Amanda. And that's under Babe in the Burbs, which is fun. So I do a blog for that. And I think that's all of them. I, I do. Oh, and I also appear on Friday nights on Mr. Smelly 1977's um, uh, live stream show. I do some other ones here and there, but I post about that on my on my main um, Instagram page. So if you want to see where I'm going to be and uh, hopefully I'll be doing some more podcasts with you, Danita, because I love doing it and I love sharing my experience and just how special, um, you know, your program has been to me and it really is life change. I would never have thought it would have made such an impact on me six months ago when I started. So wow. thank you. Yeah. Thanks for being a part of it. And I mean, you had to have trust. There had to have been alignment in some way. And so you had to have been in that place to know this was it. And so I just appreciate, honestly, I'm, I'm honored to be your coach because I will say teachers are probably my most favorite in a way because they are such great students. Oh my gosh. We, are, I mean, we, we do follow directions very well. <laughs> All those teachers out there, I tell you, you guys are awesome. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. So there was you. just, um, you're, you had such a great and fast transformation because there was so much openness too. And your higher self was ready. It was ready for a breakthrough. I think it knew that there was something going on in the relationship too. And it was ready for, for some growth and yes. another level. So it's just yep. really beautiful to see like your starting point to your ending point and want to continue to keep watching that journey. So keep sharing with us. Hopefully you're in the Facebook mm -hmm. group so you can keep sharing your transformation am, yeah. going through this. Perfect. Love it. Well, that's Mandy, you guys. Now you know why I freaking adore this woman. She's awesome. Oh, I agree. <laughs> and I think it's important that we surround ourselves with these type of women. This is sisterhood. When we can really actually be inspired by each other, we can lift each other up. We can call each other out on the carpet and say, look, I know it's tough to say that you might be in a loop, but like, we're going to call you out on that. That's sisterhood. That's truth to say, let's, let's break free of it and let's get to your real self. So thanks yes. for everything tonight. And uh, we'll talk soon. We've been the world since you felt like this, 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 this. We've been the world since you felt like this, this. Since you felt like